teams are already in the semifinals of the Little League Softball World Series here in Portland, Oregon. One spot left. Will it be Hawaii or Italy? Moving on to tomorrow's semifinal action. You take a look at our bracket. Oregon was the first to punch its ticket. They're going to take on North Carolina tomorrow night in the semifinals. Louisiana just got a close win over Mexico, 1-0. And now it'll be either Hawaii or Italy moving on to face Louisiana. Welcome back to Alpen Rose, Courtney Lau, alongside two-time Olympic gold medalist Michelle Smith and two-time All-American Amanda Scarborough. All right, we've seen some good softball so far. Favorite moments, ladies, from today? I think mine is going to be the Lauren Vanderpool inside the park home run. It wasn't just an inside the park home run. She led off the game that way, and North Carolina would go on to win. She was a spark plug. And I'd have to say all of the hitting pitchers, they've just been outstanding in the circle with shutouts, but they've also put some runs up on the board. So I'm impressed with the unicorns, as you like to call yeah. them, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> well, Wednesday, we started with 10 teams. We narrowed it down to eight today. You're going to see athletes ages 10 to 12 years old. They'll play six innings on a 60-foot diamond. The difference there for college is the 40-foot pitching distance, a little bit shorter than you would see on the college stage. And everybody is going to get to play because of minimum mandatory play. So we've talked about those pitchers that hit. Well, Hawaii's got one. Jenna Sniffen can do it all. Just the ability to pitch on the outside corner, move the ball through the zone. She's explosive in the circle, but Amanda, her bat, watch out. I don't think there's a pitch that she can't hit. Any pitch that is thrown up there, she's looking to drive the ball. Two out of the park home runs, 14 hits in the World Series, and so many RBIs. Yeah, 14 of 16 for the World Series for Jenna Sniff, and that is pretty impressive. Hawaii getting set to face Italy. One team moving on to the semifinals. Sun going down here in Portland, Oregon. We get set for our final elimination game of this quarterfinal round between Hawaii and Italy. And this Hawaii team is fairly new. Chris Button has more. This is the first year for Honolulu Little League softball, and this Hawaii team wasn't formed until the second week of June. Then they won two games to win state. They went to San Bernardino, won regionals. So how does a team that hasn't spent a lot of time together get so good so fast? Well, practice, 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 as they say. They would have practice at night, sometimes three to four hours. They'd start at 7 p.m. because that's the only time they could get the field time. Sometimes wouldn't wrap up till 11 p.m p.m. at night, but all that practice has brought him here to Portland. Yeah, that's crazy. Chad Willing, the manager of Hawaii, talked about how impressed he was with his team's work ethic because Starting that's what's gotten them here to Portland Sierra in the World Sierra. Series, putting in all that extra work and those long practices. Here's the lineup for Hawaii. Nikki Chung will lead things off hitting 400, but watch for Jenna Sniffen in the three spot. Now you can watch for her. We'll talk about her all game. But as a team, Hawaii is hitting 362 in leading the World Series here in Portland. The pitcher in the circle, Kiara DeLauro. And DeLauro, she is the manager's daughter. She loves to pitch, wants the ball, wants to be in that circle. And she has told her dad, I want to be the best pitcher in the world. And I love that moxie. That's exactly what you need to have. Oh, and by the way, they're, they're, they're family. They're big Red Sox fans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they took a trip to Fenway even. Italy comes in having gone one and three in pool play. Meanwhile, this Hawaii team, one of two teams that went undefeated in pool play at 4-0. and you heard Chris mention it, Hawaii's road was a little bit different. They didn't, they just had states and then went straight to regionals in San Bernardino. <laughs> went 4-0 and in that regionals tournament in San Bernardino, California, and Hawaii only gave up one run. That was in the final to Northern California. Nikki Chong to Fenichi. Chad Willing leading up this Hawaii team.
Iloto have talked a little bit about her different pitches. That she has the ability to throw curveball, screwball, change up, drop. So she will move the ball around. As you drop ball going down. I think most importantly is going to be trying to get ahead of the strong Hawaii hidden team. Mariah and Toki. Carlotta Vila all over it. Two down now. And she's already showing Hawaii how she's going to pitch them in this game. She's going to stay low and away. Being able to paint that outside corner, work her curveball that just breaks away from them, and then also work a drop ball that moves down and away. And here we come to Jenna Sniffen, who is 14 of 16 for the tournament. That's an 825 batting average. Do you even throw to her? <laughs> I mean, wow. The surprising part when you look at her stats is that she's 14 of 16. She's only walked once. So teams are choosing to pitch to her. They're not pitching around her. Well, I just love her swing. I love her extension. You're going to see the way her hands mm. come to the ball and through the ball. And as a pitcher, when you see a, a hitter doing that against you, that's when you're like, all right, got to mix speeds. Take a look from the side. Look at her hands, the way they're going to travel right through the ball. And then mm. that barrel as it continues. Now that one, she flares off a little bit to the side. But when she ropes the ball back up the middle, those hands continue out towards center field. Gets it past third. And it hops off with Benetti. It'll sniff it at first. They rule it a hit. You know, they're trying to work that outside corner, and she gets so antsy that this pitch is two or three balls off the plate, and it's off speed, so she gets around it, hits it off the end of the bat, but she just perfectly places it over on the left side, and it'll go down as a, a hit. Yes, it is a hit. This is Lexi Hinohara. Has three hits this week. Hits in three of the four games. She's reached base in every game for Hawaii. Going back to the same spot this time. Benetti is there, but Sniffen slides in safely to second. The ball hit the third baseman. Maletto, oh, excuse me, that's actually the shortstop. Benetti, and she's going to go over, try to get the short way out. This is just a slow developing play. Not a lot you can really do about it. You have to love the fact that Sniffen's going to beat that out. She's running hard into the bag. And in steps, Taryn Ho, who is adorable. <laughs> <laughs> and she's hitting 400, which is even more yes. impressive. I think she's the smallest athlete we've seen today out of the eight teams. Wielding a big bat. Ball gets away from Garavilla. Runners advance. They'll move over on the pass ball. Oh, pops it foul. Oh, watch out for our camera guy. Good thing that umbrella was uh, providing shade and a blockade. Yes. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> Rhyming. <laughs> Ho, Taryn Ho with a big cut, and that'll be the first strikeout for Delaro. Two left in scoring position for Hawaii.
Hawaii gets two hits in the top of the first inning, but no runs come across. It'll be Italy's turn to come to the plate for the first time. Got some strong hitters at the top of their order. Carlotta, Villa, a 556 hitter. And then watch out for the pitcher. We've been talking about pitchers that hit. She's hitting 875. Yeah, 875. The same as Sniffin, and guess what? She has three triples in the tournament, which is impressive. So we've got two pitchers that are hitting 875. That's impressive. <laughs> this battle just continues it through does. all these games. Pitcher versus pitcher at the plate in the circle. And here is Jenna Sniffin in the circle for Hawaii. Yeah, Jenna Sniffin's going to throw with good velocity. Sure, she has very good spin. Can work the ball away Jenna with her curveball and then up with her rise ball. And fun fact about Jenna Sniffin is that she calls her own game. So that's going to be a lot of fun to watch as we progress. Nobody is giving her signals in from the dugout. It is all up to her. Shaking off already. Yeah. <laughs> the first pitch. <laughs> up against Carlotta Villa. Her favorite athlete is Michael Phelps. This Italy team is from Milano, Italy. Northern Italy. Oh, that one hit back. Get Jenna. Just doesn't even flinch. Okay. Grabs it. Moving on. No surprise. She can do it all. Plays third base for her travel ball team. Used to the hot corner and ball just flying at her. Line drive. She's in a fielding position balanced and ready to make a play and not let one sneak up the middle of the field. Ludovica Garavello up the catcher. For Italy, they had to go to the Netherlands to play. That was their regional for Europe, Africa. They went 5-0 there, beat the Czech Republic 14-1 in that final game to make sure they earned it. Softball can really show you the world. It's amazing that the places that softball can bring you. Caravello takes a big swing. First strikeout for Jenna Sniffen. Looks like a little bit of curve, a little bit of up, a little bit of out at 63 miles an hour. Sniffen's going to have to really work on having those quick hands, getting extended. And it's tough to see the ball right now, too. A lot of shadows on the field. So we really have to focus on that ball out of release. Kiara De La Rowe, the pitcher, is up. She's reached safely in nine of ten plate appearances at the Little League Softball World Series. She's the one hitting 875. I think the pitchers from last game, too, were hitting the exact same they average. They were, yes. Started the game. That's kind of weird. With Giardina from Louisiana. And then Robledo from Mexico. Maybe it was the game before, Michelle. I don't know. <laughs> They're starting this to play together. Because we have a lot of good hitting pitchers, Absolutely. too. So that's yeah. why I we're just getting a little bit confusing. This is our fourth game today. Dante De La Rose is the manager of this Italy team. His daughter in the batter's box right now. in a row for Jenna Sniffen and no score in this quarterfinal. Welcome back to Portland. We sent out a questionnaire and we ask all these players and coaches, what is your favorite thing to eat from back home? And what the Hawaii team said is, Spam Masubi, and I've got some. This is what it is. It's rice with 
grilled spam. This one has some egg in it wrapped in seaweed. They said they cook it, eat it every day. They've even <laughs> made it here. And guys, guess what? I have an entire tray that I'm going to come bring you up at the booth. Oh. I can't wait to Are you going to try it with us, Chris? Well, I mean, sure. Yeah. I won't be left out. <laughs> wow. That's very nice of them. They also brought us chocolate covered macadamia nuts. It's a very interesting food. I'm, I wonder what it tastes Yeah, I'm interested to see what it tastes like. Marley Spencer leading off here for Hawaii. I like sushi, so I think I'm going to get the same experience, maybe a little bit different. What do you think? I'm wondering if you use soy sauce or mustard on it. <laughs> <laughs> Spencer hits one straight to Carlotta Villa. Spencer's able to barrel up this ball, but Carlotta Villa is just so tall over there and left-handed, able to grab it, hit right at her. This is Kai Pajarillo. First pitch, slings it to short. Two away. So I don't have any wasabi and I don't have soy sauce, so you're just gonna have to eat a plain. Okay. You wanna open it? Yeah, we'll open it. This is a first for me. <laughs> Let's okay. go ahead and dig in. Dig in, Courtney. Okay. They're pretty. They're, they're a little hearty. Yeah. I will say of the pictures that we saw, the spam is a lot thicker in the yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. I'm digging in. Cheers. I'm gonna set my mic down. Mm, that's good. I feel like I have rice stuck on my teeth now, but other than that, it's good. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. They eat this every day, apparently. Mm -hmm. I might go for a little thicker piece of Spam. I just taste a lot of rice. Mm -hmm. It's good, though. Yeah. yeah. All right. I can yeah. tell. I can tell. Good, good job, girls. <laughs> now, where's that, where's that chocolate with those macadamia? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Second strikeout for Delaro. No score here at Alpen Rose. We've been throwing it back, if you will, to some of the stars of today and where they got started. Look at baby Kelly Barnhill and Jenny Ritter. I just love watching these stars. Jocelyn Alo from Oklahoma, of course. Hawaii ties, Hawaii playing in this game. Got some great photos. Really good throwbacks. Nice. Really great unis. Yeah. All knee pad from yeah. mid shin to <laughs> mid quad. No score in the bottom of the second inning. Winner is going to move on to the semifinals to take on Louisiana. Now batting for Europe Africa, number 27. Maybe Catherine some of those Brown. these players that are in this game will end up, you know, 10 years from now in our throwback pictures. That's right. How cool would that be? Very cool. Yeah, we had one of the teams, their parents, it was Iowa, right? The parents yeah. sent in pictures of themselves playing Little League or when they were little playing baseball and softball. There's Katarina Benetti. Coaches told us Benetti is lots of, and she brings a lot of energy to this team, an exuberant player, a pretty good dancer too. I said sometimes when she's on the field, she might seem a little angry, but she's just really focused and locked in. Gets jammed, Taryn Ho tries to dive for it. It's gonna be a hit. Benetti jammed up just a little bit on this ball. Looks like it was going to run, get underneath her hands, but she just fights it off, jams it right back up the middle. I love that. You know, that's proof that you finish your swing, even if you can see that ball coming in on your hands or running away from you. Stay committed to the pitch, swing at it, and get it through the infield. She's going to second. They're in time. Benetti in scoring position. 
It was a bunt called on the play, but the hitter, Finici, pulls back, and Benetti gets a lead, then decides she's going to go ahead and steal second. Hawaii's going to come together, go out to second base. This is a big opportunity for Italy to have a runner in scoring position against this Hawaii team. Hasn't given up a run in their last two games. So there's a challenge. We're trying to get clarification on what exactly they're challenging. Yeah, Kate, Kate, Kate. If she left early, Kate. maybe? Kate, vieni yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know if you can challenge that. Well, they're looking to see if her foot came off and then they tagged her. I think her. It looks like her foot's uh, on the back of the bag. Yeah, and even when she slides, her yeah. back knee slides into the bag, even yeah. with the, the tag being held on. Yeah. Yeah, she looks safe to me. Solo se vale la interna. Okay, so the runner will be safe. Video review was added in last year, so they were able to have that option. So Benetti back at second with Christina Venici at the plate. Lays down the bunt. Sniffin looks to third. Gets the out at first. Well, Benetti advances to third. Well, and I love the way that Italy chooses to run this bunt situation. They tell Benetti not to advance until after the throw goes to first. You see this a lot in international play. So the bunt goes down. Hawaii does a good job of picking it up. You can see the way that Sniffin's looking like wanting to go after her, but the runner's not advancing. She goes to first to get the out, and then the runner advances. I think if, if Sniffin's put in that situation again, I'd like to see her fake it to first and see if she can get that runner to bite. Oftentimes when she's playing third base or other position, exactly, and they do that and get and, to pull her off. And that's a great play, but then you have to have either your center fielder or your second baseman coming behind to cover yeah. second, because if second's vacated, you can fake and the runner can still retreat. But absolutely, when your center fielder comes in and does that, you can pick him off. This is Matilde Decol Balletto. Rolls away from Hinohara, runner coming home. Italy's on the board first. The Scores team, on the pass ball. And the team that has scored first in all three games today has been the team that has won that game. Hinohara just bounces off the heel of her glove, just seemed mixed up by the signal, not expecting that pitch to be where it was, and Italy scores. That's really big. Hawaii hadn't given up a run in its last two games. This team from Italy, is they're not intimidated. They're going out there. They're taking big cuts. Off of Jenna Sniffin, even though she throws with a great deal of velocity. I remember Hawaii, the undefeated team, 4-0, and Italy, the team that's 1-3, come into this game. Yep.
Yeah, Italy's only win has been against Canada in pool play on Saturday. They had 12 hits in that game, scored 10 runs. Del Cole and Balletu will walk. Just the fourth walk by Sniffen in the tournament. Check out the emotion here. After Benetti came home and scored that run. Yeah, Benetti is fired up. You know, it's fun to be the underdog. Now batting for your Africa, number six, Lucia Polini. Just one out with a runner on for Lucia Polini. Pops up Hinahara all over it for out number two. Good job by Hinahara to find that ball immediately, circle back around and just protect it too with their body just to make sure that it wasn't gonna drop. Brings us to Erica DeBellis with two outs. Delco Baletu on first. Runner going. Italy being very aggressive, taking off. DeBellis rolls it to Taryn Ho at second. But Italy will be the first to strike. They score on a passed ball. And they lead an undefeated Hawaii team 1-0. For training videos for coaches and umpires, get free backyard tips, practice plans, drills, videos, and more. Visit littleleagueuniversity.org today. The um, sh Hawaiian shaved ice has been really popular here today. Really good crowd for our nightcap with the quarterfinals, too. Yeah, I can't wait to see what tomorrow's like for the semis. Yeah, yeah we'll have both semifinals for you over on ESPN2. The championship will be Wednesday night at 10 Eastern on ESPN. Pinch hitter for Hawaii. Myla Ann Burgess-Healy. In the ninth spot. The weather has just been beautiful here too, especially coming from Texas where the feels like is like 111, 112. I mean, Ooh, this feels like yeah. we're in winter time. They had a little bit of rain during pool play earlier in the week. Didn't cause too many delays though. But the nice weather came just in time for us. Just in time, <laughs> sunshine. <laughs> Loro just continuing to work that outside corner, just sticking with the game plan of staying away from these powerful right-handed hitters from Hawaii. You can tell she's committed to it. She's got a little bit of that wiggle on that pitch as well. So it just kind of runs from the righties. Strikeout number three for DeLaro. Two in a row. Her dad said that she's been working on this drop ball. Kind of a newer pitch for her, but I think it's looked good in this game. Starts at the knees and then it breaks down at the shoelaces. That had good wiggle to it, as you said, Michelle. Brings us to the top of the order for Hawaii with Nikki Chong. Her dad said that Kiara DeLaro, she's one of those kids, she's been in the dugout pretty much her whole life. You mentioned it at five years old. She said she was going to be the best, best pitcher in the world. Decided she wanted to come here to the Little League World Series at five. And it's just a family thing. Her sister actually plays softball at Colby Community College in Kansas. 
She's got a lot of focus, a lot of determination. It's been a common theme. Nikki Chong to Benetti. Close play at first. Nikki Chong getting down the line very quickly, turning it over. Benetti, great job at shortstop, gets it across the field. I thought at first look, I thought maybe that Chong was going to be safe. And it looks oh, like she, yeah, is. she yeah, is. She's safe. That is a reviewable play. But they have to hesitate to challenge it because they already lost one they of their challenges. Lost, right. And you get two, but you get to keep it if you're correct. But if you're not correct, then you lose it. But you can't risk it here at yeah. the top of the third. I kind of question the, the challenge on the, the steal. I didn't yeah. think that yeah. was profound enough. I mean, granted, there were no outs. This is Jasmine Akawili. But I think if they would not have challenged that play, they definitely would have challenged this one. Tough decisions as managers yeah. to, to make. to Villa all over it. Italy still leads it, one nothing. It allows you to lose yourself in a dream. To feel and remember a season of life when summer lasted forever. Have fun playing baseball, it's never gonna be any better than this. Little League Baseball World Series starts up Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern on ESPN in Williamsport. Pennsylvania. We've got the girls, the softball Little League World Series here in Portland, Oregon. Three teams have already made it to the semifinal round. Only one spot left. Either Hawaii or Italy will get it. And Italy is leading an undefeated Hawaii team right now. one nothing. Cecilia Ravazio takes the first pitch to Taryn Ho at second. First time through the lineup, Italy coming up swinging. You know, they had those two strikeouts yeah. back in the first inning and have not struck out since. Okay. It's been impressive. Five, the first baseman, Carlo Tavila. This is back to the top of the order. Carlotta Villa, the first baseman. Skyward goes Villa. Taryn Hill getting some work at second. She's busy. Taryn Ho is going to go back on this ball. Look at the way she immediately takes a great angle back. She squares up, makes the catch. Wow. Get Such a done. good drop step. Yeah. <laughs> and then flashing the smile. <laughs> so cute. Italy is going to go ahead and make a substitution here. Sveva Mariota. Mariotti, excuse me. We'll look for her first hit of the World Series. Right to Jenna Sniffen's glove. Hawaii will, Hawaii will try to even things up when we come back. They trail by a run. Fourth inning now of the quarterfinals here in Alpen Rose between Italy and Hawaii. Winner is moving on to take on Louisiana and Jenna Sniffen is gonna lead off for Hawaii. This is a team who puts up a lot of runs. The least amount of runs that they've scored in this tournament is seven. And they're averaging a ton of runs yeah. per game here. 
Well, and the fact that going into the fourth inning, there's still a goose egg up there. You gotta give a lot of credit to this Italian team, their defense, and Bilotto in the circle. I mean, she's just been outstanding. Look at her. Getting teammates getting some bumps going on, and they're having a good time. This is, this is Little League softball at its best right there. <laughs> You see how far out the catcher is setting up, just trying to pitch around sniffing, but she can reach two or three balls off. Now, she's not going to hit it very well, but still she can reach it, and she's swinging at it. She wants to go up there and hit. She's the only one that's gotten a hit. Italy's retired eight straight. And so Jenna has played baseball her whole life, too. I got a chance to see her dad Shannon before the game and her last baseball season was this 2019 past summer so she's now done with baseball has played baseball and softball her whole life there's some room for Jenna Sniffen in shallow shallow left just fair and Amanda, three pitches, she swings at all three of them. She's just like, if it's not bouncing, I think she's going after it. And she just <laughs> off the end of the barrel. But you know what? It's where they're not, and that's what counts. Look at it. It's up at her shoulders. She's a little bit early, hits it off the end of the bat, but gets it to drop on the green. Yeah, both of her hits no, haven't been pretty nine, necessarily, but they've done the job. Done she's the found job. a way to get on base. Well, and this one, most importantly, lead off of the inning. Yeah. Her first hit of the game was with two outs in that first inning. So this is an opportunity now for the team from Hawaii. This is Lexi Muramoto come in as a pinch hitter for Hawaii with... And we've seen the teams that have won today just execute very well. And they haven't made very many mistakes, very many errors. The teams that have won today have played clean softball in all facets of the game. Yeah, not many free passes. No errors. And Muramoto will take a seat. Fourth strikeout for DeLauro. And you see how far out that... Garavello, the catcher, is setting up outside, just trying to get these hitter, the Hawaii hitters to chase that pitch and fall right into the hand of DeLauro. Look at that. Six pitches, six strikes this inning. Taryn Ho with the bunt. Moves sniffing to second. Taryn Ho is just so fundamentally sound. <laughs> She's so reliable, so consistent, defensively and offensively. You know what you're going to get out of her day in and day out. Marley Spencer now. Tying run at second. See how this game has played out already. We're what over halfway through. Is that Hawaii just seems so nervous? Like they're playing with everything to lose. Yes. And Italy, the underdog, come in this game. They're playing so loose and attacking, being aggressive. Yeah, one and three. They were happy to make the quarterfinals. Yes. <laughs> there were some other teams with the same record that did not. Dante De La Rue told us, you know, there's. It's hard for them, you know, during the regular season to face talent like they see here. The teams are different in Italy. Now, De La Rowe in the circle has been one of the better pitchers here in terms of whip. In fact, coming in this game, she's had the fourth best whip 
just behind Sniffin, and then second place would have been Giardina. And then Campbell Shane, the pitcher for North Carolina, number one. And that's walks and hits per innings pitch. So she's helping herself out by not walking hitters and, and not giving up a lot of hits in those innings that she's in the circle. And that's really the name of the game. When your whip is low, it's really difficult to score against you. There's all other analytics you can use, but I, I think that's, in generality, is one of the best ones. We need to come up with a saying, when your whip is low, and then something that rhymes with that. <laughs> Traffic's <laughs> slow. Yeah. <laughs> Five strikeouts now for De La Roe. And a runner left in scoring position. Italy on top, one nothing. Hawaii and Italy are battling it out for that last spot in the semifinals to take on Louisiana. We've played four games today here in the quarterfinals of the Little League Softball World Series in Portland, Oregon. Crowd really filling in for this last game. <laughs> we might see her playing out here someday. Hopefully. There's little pigtails. Mm -hmm. Teams from all over the world. Coming to play at Alpen Rose. Team from Italy is playing in this game. Canada, the Philippines is here. And this is kind of surprising in this last game, guys, because Hawaii came in undefeated. They were putting up a monster number of runs. Eight, seven, 11 in pool play. Winning all four of those games. And here they have two hits against Italy, both by Jenna Sniffen. Yeah, Kiata up at the plate right now is doing it in the circle. Just another outstanding pitching performance that we've seen today. We can't stop talking about it because really every pitcher has thrown well. <laughs> Jenna Sniffen strikes her out. Guys, you'll notice over by the Hawaii fan base that a lot of them have leaves in their hand and the coaches have these uh, lays around their tea leaves. And it's a very spiritual leaf to them that they think if you wear them that it creates good luck and, and uh, kind of creates an aura around. Hawaii could use some of that right now. That's really cool. Yeah, we saw them putting it up on our camera stand and I've noticed the coaches wearing them during all the games. Katarina Benetti is the one who came in and scored on the passed ball. That's the difference in this game. That was back in the second inning. She single-handedly did. She got a base hit, stole second base, was bunted over to third, and then a ball got back to the, to the fence, and she took off home. And yeah, that, that bunt by Finici was just yes. so important to move her over to third base. Three balls, no strikes to Benetti. Second walk tonight for Jenna Sniffen. She came in with only three walks for the tournament in 16 innings. Now batting for Europe Africa, number 40, Alessandra Beefy. Here comes Alessandra Biffy in to bat for Italy now in the five spot. There goes Benetti. They call her safe again. Here she goes, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, Italy has shown that they will run. Third stolen base of the game already. They came in six for seven on the base paths through four games. Biffy with the bunt. They get her at second. 
And Amanda out. Sack bunt down. Fake the throw to first okay, to pull the runner. Bonetti out. But your center fielder has to come and cover. And you can see the center fielder comes in. So Chong comes in, throw over, and applies the tag. And I think now the question is, are they going to try to review this play? Dante De La Rowe, the manager for Italy. Yeah, it did to me. It looked like Bonetti got her hand back before the tag was applied right Ah, it's, it's going to be really tough to overturn, actually. But it's the exact same play because Bonetti the last time was at third base when the bunt was bunted back to Sniffin. And Sniffin chose not to do the fake. It's, it's, I just think it's going to be really hard to overturn what's called on the field. Yeah, and the, the foot, actually, of the center fielder is kind of blocking where you could see. It's definitely a close, close play. But that's a play we were calling for, Michelle. <laughs> and yeah. they've been listening to you guys. And I think Sniffin could have even faked it a little bit more. Yeah. Like she gave the fake away, and it caused Bonetti to not move towards third base as much as Sniffin would have liked. But a really good hustle by Nikki Chong, the center fielder, to come in from center field position and cover second base and make that tag. You're not used to as a center fielder making those tags like no. that. Original call was that she was out, that they did apply the tag. Brian Finneman is our home plate umpire. He's the one on the phone. Benetti may have jammed her hand, too. You can see how she's holding it, sliding back, or holding something in her hand. All right. She's out. Original call stands. Just don't think that there was enough evidence to prove otherwise. Yeah. And that's why the call on the field, what it is, is so important for these replays at the Little League level and then eventually when we get to it at the collegiate level. Special pinch runner coming to first base. Sveva Mariotti. Number one, Sveva Mariotti for Alessandra Beefy. Now batting number 14, Matilde Del Col Balletto. Matilda Del Col Balletto back up to the plate now. Two outs, runner on first. She walked and stole the base in the second. <laughs> Sniffin quickly ahead, 0-2. Just crazy to think that we've had three shutouts already. The score held, held if it did. Another shutout, and the team that scored first would go on to win. And you know these teams want it too. They want a chance to play tomorrow, to play in the semis, just to have a chance to then win that game and play in the championship game. That's why you're here. And that's why this single limb. So important when you get into bracket play, right? You can be 4-0 and have a great round robin. Lose a game you shouldn't, you're done. Gets away from Hinohara. Well, and remember, too, that same thing happened to Louisiana last year. They were undefeated in pool play, and they went to bracket play and ended up losing the semis. Full count to Delco Balletto. Oh. 
And Jenna Sniffen still out there calling her own game. Still in command, working with Lexi Hinihara, but when Hinihara puts down a signal, it's more of a suggestion to see yeah. if Jenna <laughs> Sniffen wants to take it. Yeah, and, and Sniffen has crossed her up a couple times, and you can see that yeah. Hinihara comes up and is <laughs> shaking her hand because she's been crossed up. I, I know what that looks like look is like because my <laughs> catcher is a couple times her eyeballs get as big as saucers through their <laughs> through their mask it's a tough position Nicole Baletto gets it down to right runner coming home two runs on the board for Italy Diego Baletto is just going to take a pitch that's on the white part of the plate. She steps in the bucket and shoots it the opposite way. That velocity that Sniffen is providing just drops that ball out onto the green. Nice try by Ching out in right field, but just can't get to it. She does knock it down, but easily going to score. Mariotti, the special pinch runner for the second run of the game for Italy. That is a huge insurance run. No batting for your Balfour gun. Number 15, Eleonora Chesena. Look at Italy go. Eleonora Chesena steps in. It hit her. She'll take first. Two on. It's tough. There's a lot of pressure here. It's a big stage. This team is, Hawaii team is undefeated here. We've only managed a couple of hits off of Italy tonight. Yeah, I think too, you know, when you're representing not only your little league, but your community and your state, you want it so bad. You start yeah. to feel that pressure. It's been a long. It's been a long week. They started playing games on Wednesday. Had to travel a long way in from Hawaii and been playing a, a ton of games, getting a lot of attention from people in their community and fans. And they went home after winning in San Bernardino. They went back to Hawaii before they came back here to Portland. So they've traveled a lot. This is Emma Silva. And there's the strikeout that Jenna Sniffen's been looking for. Watch Italy go. They are up 2-0 on Hawaii in the quarterfinals. Chiara Dior has just been painting the corners using all of her pitches. Nice little curve, nice little down to man to five strikeouts so far for her. She and her catcher just working so well together. She's putting the ball exactly where she wants to on the outside corner and just keeping these Hawaii hitters off balance all game. And Italy is playing youth loose. They got the crowd behind them. They look like they're having fun out there. They're beating an undefeated team right now, 2 nothing, with a spot in the semifinals up for grabs. They've got all kinds of handshakes That's with right. each other. Yeah. <laughs> Booty bumps and all, st all sorts of good team stuff going hey, whatever on. Whatever works, guys. Whatever works. Probably had a long flight to come up with what they were going to yeah. do. That's right. <laughs> Kill some time. This is Paige Brunn. Up pinch hitting for Hawaii. Hey, maybe it was the pregame meal because we saw Italy over in the stands eating some hamburgers and hot dogs That's from right. the concession stand in our last game. <laughs> and chips. Yep, and chips. Making sure they got an eye on the team they could face if they make the semifinals. That would be Louisiana tomorrow. And Brun strikes out number six for De La Rowe. 
Little Eek would like to extend a special thank you to its official sponsors like Gatorade, who helped maintain the strength and leadership of the Little League program. Little League would also like to thank its dedicated volunteers who make the program a special experience for millions of children. All of the umpires are volunteers. The third base umpire, Max Cannon, it's actually his birthday today. The crowd was singing happy birthday to him before the game. All these August birthdays, I'm telling y'all. Yeah. They're, they're just a lot. <laughs> Lehua Koba. Hawaii only has two hits tonight. Both of them were by Jenna Sniffen. And I love the pre-pitch routine of Chiara Dilota. Look at the way that she takes a deep breath. She'll close her eyes and focus. I mean, she just, every pitch, she has that pre-pitch routine. She sets a great example for her team. You know, they're looking at her. She shows focus. She shows that passion. There's eyes closed, deep breath, steps on the rubber. So important to have a pre-pitch routine for pitchers. And, you know, her mom, Sarah, is her pitching coach. And Sarah was actually a catcher. And Chiara has actually also worked with Sarah Pauly over in Italy, in Bolate, Italy. Sarah Pauly, who used yep. to pitch at Texas A&M Corpus Christi, and used to coach there as well. Two down. And Sarah played in Italy and yeah. also professionally here in the United yep. States. And I love that. I think that's so important. We need U.S. players to go over to Italy, and, and not just actually Italy, but all of Europe to really continue to grow the sport and those continents, Africa as well. Italy punching their tickets, speaking of, to the yeah. Olympics in and, 2020. And I was going to say, that'll be the key for us as a sport, trying to remain on the Olympic program, because unfortunately we'll not be on the 2024 Olympic program in Paris. Natalie Ching, Delaro runs over to get it and makes the throw in time. Okay. Pitcher's ability to field their position so important. Look at the way Delaro is going to go get that ball. Turns immediately, fires across to Villa at first. Great stretch, big out. Final out of the inning. Thursday, the Little League World Series gets underway from Williamsport, Pennsylvania with an opening round quadruple header. We're going to start things off at 1 Eastern on ESPN with Curacao in Australia. And then the kids from Rhode Island are going to take on Virginia. We've got all the games covered for you all day. All four also streaming live on the ESPN app so you can watch anywhere. Italy is going to try to add to this lead. They are up 2-0, have held Hawaii to just two hits in our quarterfinal. Julia Arini pinch hitting to start off in the ninth spot. This ball just had eyes down the left field line, falls in there for Arini, who actually thought that it was a foul ball and halfway down first base, stopped running, started to head back towards home. And everyone was yelling at her, and then she gets back down to first base for a hit. That's her first hit in the tournament, too. Everything just seems to be going Italy's way yeah. right now. They got on the board first in the second inning. Scored on a passed ball. Katarina Benetti led off that inning with a single, then stole a base, was moved over thanks to a sacrifice bunt, and then came on home on the passed ball. Special pinch runner coming in for Italy at first. Three 
It's Cecilia Rovazio. You get two of these per game, one per inning. You can only use one in an inning. And they get the lead runner. Jenna Sniffen fields her position so well. Charges in immediately. No hesitation is going to go to her shortstop. Antoki. He's covering. Very good bunt defense. Ludovica Garavello, the catcher. So Jenna also plays travel ball, and she plays for a team out of California, the Bat Busters. So she lives in Hawaii, plays with the California Bat Busters for her travel team, commutes back and forth to California to do so. In fact, she's been in the States, or not in the States, but on the mainland for an entire month yep. because of PGF. And then, of course, the regionals. That was in San Bernardino for Little League. Runners going. A lot of commitment, of course, by Jenna and her parents and family to yep. support her to be able to do that. It's a lot. Just 12, 13 years old, and they're fully committed to this goal of playing softball and getting recruited and getting to play in college. Yeah, and I love how this team from Hawaii, they were adamant they wanted to try to make it here form this team. Wow, look at Italy now. They are just being aggressive on the base paths. Villa safe at third. And Garavello took advantage and went over to second. So this is a communication issue here. So Hawaii probably needs to talk a little bit more and say we probably don't have a chance going after the lead runner. Let's get Garavello the, or the, the batter out. And so Italy just taking advantage. Throw goes to third and Garavello is going to follow the throw and advance all the way to second base. And now their best hitter is up, and Kiara De La Rowe, the pitcher, came into the game hitting 875. And she struck out two times in this game, and so she goes up swinging early in the count, saying, I'm trying to, I'm not, I don't want two strikes anymore. I don't want to deal with two strikes. I'm going to try to hit early in the count. Run slides in as De La Rowe rolls it to second. Now a 3-0 lead for Italy. It's just more good execution by Italy. Runner at third base, less than two outs. A ground ball over towards second base is going to score eight times out of ten, nine times out of ten. And Villa being able to get a good jump and score the third run of this game for Italy. Katarina Benetti. Scored the first run on that passed ball. Did it all in the second. Let off with a single. Stole a base. Came all the way around. Here comes another run home. It got away from Hinohara. Wild pitch scores another run for Italy. Sniffin trying to come high and inside. Every inning that Italy has had runners on, they've scored. They've had two innings where they went three up, three down, back in the first and then in the third. But when they've got, got runners on, they've put pressure on Hawaii to make plays and make decisions and for Jenna Sniffin to make pitches. And stolen bases, not afraid to run. 
and, uh, and test the, the defense. Yeah, Katarina Benetti has two stolen bases. Four total. Nina Hardo tried to lay out for it. And her wrist and shoulder ended up getting stuck in the grass there as she dove for it. Benetti will take her base. Second time that she's walked. Jenna Sniffen has matched her walk total coming into this game. She had three. She got three tonight. Runner going again. Another stolen base for Italy. That's three for Benetti. Christina Finucci up with a runner in scoring position. You know, I think because Jenna Sniffen does call her own game, she has a tendency whenever things are, are not going great for her to move really fast. And try to muscle the ball past hitters and try to, oh, instead yeah. of mixing speeds and finessing and locating. She does get the strike out there. Strikeout number five, but Italy plates two more runs in the fifth inning. Now a four-nothing lead. So close to that semifinal game. A beautiful full moon out tonight in Portland, Oregon. So we're getting close to the end of our day of quarterfinal action at the Little League Softball World Series. Check out Hawaii's numbers. In their four games of pool play, they averaged 8.3 runs per game. Tonight, no runs, just two hits against Italy. And both of those hits are by Jenna Sniffen, so. She'll be the third player up to bat as Hawaii gets to stop with, start with the top of its order. Gotta come back here, or Italy will be the one moving on. Nikki Chong to lead off. We've not seen any comebacks yet today. Three shutouts for the first three games. Right now, Hawaii could potentially be the fourth. I want to see a comeback. I want to see an attempt to get some runners on and score some runs. It would be so big for Hawaii if Nikki Chong, these first two hitters, could get on, could do something, because when Jenna Sniffen is at the plate, she's dangerous. Well, one of the things already that we're seeing that Nikki Chong is doing in this inning is not chasing pitches outside of the zone. For this entire game, the Hawaii team's been extremely aggressive, which has worked for them in, in previous games. But chasing some pitches out of the zone is where you have to have that discipline. Try to get something good to hit. Really nice hit from Nikki Chong. It's still rolling. She's going to get two. Well, what sets this up, Amanda, and you know it in the circle as well as in the box, when you're laying off pitches, you know you're going to get something good to hit, and that's exactly what Nikki Chong does, is that she drives this ball right at the third baseman. And Boletto is getting a little bit of cold spray. <laughs> and Matilda De Boletto, yeah. who was at third, got a piece of that ball on her leg. Yeah, oh, it's Amazing. better now. <laughs> She got up saying, let's go. Hey, she, I got it, I got it. She was playing a little bit up the line. Ball got on her in a hurry. By far the hardest hit ball off the bats of Hawaii in this game. Yeah. Even the two hits have just been at ice. Mariah and Toki back up. No outs and a runner in scoring position.
big situation down to your last three outs. Got to make sure you're trying to put that ball in play. Need some hits, need runners. And Turkey with a great block. She's safe. Runner coming home. They missed the tag. Hawaii is on the board. It's surprising on all ends the fact that they call for Antoki to put down a bunt. You're down by four runs, down to three outs, but they believed in her to run this one out, and she would have. But the bobble created Chong with the decision that she wanted to try to score. The tag looked like it could have gotten the back of her head yeah, the way as, her it, moved helmet her moved, yeah. as it moved her helmet. And yeah. they are going to challenge it. It's a tough decision, Michelle. You're down by four runs. You should have just stayed put at third base. There's yep. no need to try to force that run across when that one run's not going to win the game, and you have your best hitter coming up. The original call was that she was safe. Oh, yeah. I can oh, see yeah. the tag. Yep, yeah. it hits the back of her helmet. Just a really risky play because that ball was right in front of the first baseman. Or excuse me, of the second baseman, Finici, who dropped the ball in the throw. Here comes the call. Yeah. She was out. Tagged her on the back of the helmet. And you can see that helmet move. So the glove comes around and hits the back of the helmet. You can see right there the helmet move. That's a good call by the umpire to come back and reverse that decision, seeing it. And I love the fact that the coach, too, as well, paying attention to that play and put forth a challenge. Jenna Sniffen is at the plate now. She does have a runner in scoring position as Mariah and Toki was able to bump over to second when Nikki Chong tried to come home. Well, Amanda, I think the point, the biggest point or learning lesson of that play is you're right, you're not gonna win. That's not the winning run. And that in a situation, maybe it's best to try to stay at third. You've got runners on base, and that's what you need here. That's still what Hawaii needs to look to do. Sniffing skyward, but it's shallow. Caught by Polini. And Toki at third, two outs. Hawaii's down to its final out. Again, Italy just hasn't hurt themselves in this game. In fact, they've stepped up defensively and made all the plays that they need to make to keep Hawaii off the base pass and to keep Hawaii off the scoreboard. It's up to Lexi Hinahara to keep it going. Takes the first pitch to short, and it's bobbled by Benetti. Run comes home on the error. The ball took a little bit of a funny hop. Darren Ho. First pitch to center. Darren Ho is so clutch. Pitch up in the zone, just gets extended. First pitch swinging, being aggressive. Never say die. Marley Spencer's turn. Two on with two outs. She represents the tying run with Ho on first and Hinohara on second. She's going to ground out to the first baseman. Italy has handed Hawaii its first loss and more importantly, they're going to the semifinals. <laughs> Yeah. 
amazing effort for Italy and you have to say hats off to Hawaii, an amazing journey for them as well, obviously not ending the way they wanted, but these young ladies from Italy have worked very hard, great effort, execution today, just a really good team effort. That's what it was, a team effort. They came together to find a way to win against a team that on paper they technically weren't supposed to beat. They were able to play loose, no expectations, and take down one of the undefeated teams coming into this game. This Hawaii team was putting up so many runs in pool play. Games where they scored 11, 7, 8, and Italy wasn't afraid. They didn't back down at all, held them to one run and got the win, a 4-1 to one win that sends them to the semifinals to take on Louisiana tomorrow. Some of the girls from Italy over talking to Jenna Sniffen. We mentioned these teams have spent almost a week together. They've been had chances to get to know each other. It's a tough loss for Hawaii. They played so well up until this point. But Italy was fantastic today. Let's get it down to Chris. Coach, your girls played so well. What did you like about the way they played today? I'm so proud of them. Just a moment. Yeah. We played the best game ever. And over my expectation, over the expectation of everyone. <laughs> Sorry, it's so, it's so hard. Why does it mean so much to you? Well, sorry? Why does it mean so much to you? It means uh, a lot of things, a lot of things, a lot of work, a lot of uh, time spent with just fantastic girls. Mm. Nothing else. Uh, I have to thank just there because they were fantastic. Um, I didn't expect, uh, it was over our expectation, really. Something really special, it's a special group. They never give up. Uh, we pass uh, through difficult moments. Uh, that's, it. that's it. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Dante De La Ro, the manager of wow. Italy. His daughter, fantastic in the circle. In the circle, outstanding. Just a great team effort, aggressive, loved watching them play. And we'll get to watch them play again tomorrow in the semifinals. They will take on Louisiana. Our first semifinal will be Oregon, North Carolina at 7, followed by Louisiana and Italy. We've got coverage for you tomorrow on ESPN2. A big upset in the last game of quarterfinals. Italy defeats undefeated Hawaii 4-1. to